Hey y'all, hey. Today we are reading ABCs of Space. A is for asteroid. An asteroid is a big chunk of rock that orbits the sun. Asteroids are called minor planets because they move around the sun like planets, but are smaller and oddly shaped. There are millions of known asteroids, and probably many more even smaller ones. Most of these are between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. B is for binary star. A binary star is actually two stars that orbit each other. Binary stars are usually born together, so they are the same age. The force of gravity on each star is the same and points toward the other star. The imaginary center of mass of the pair is the center of both orbits. C is for comet. A comet is a clump of ice and rock in a very big orbit around the sun. Comet orbits are often very elliptical instead of round. When a comet comes close enough to the sun, the sun's warmth melts some of the frozen gases forming a tail pointing away from the sun. D is for dark matter. We can't see dark matter, but it makes up most of the mass in the universe. We know dark matter is there because its gravity pulls on the matter around it. Stars and galaxies, which we can see, move much faster than they should without dark matter. E is for eclipse. An eclipse happens when the earth, moon, and sun are perfectly aligned. A total solar eclipse is when the moon's small shadow falls somewhere on the earth. A total lunar eclipse is when the earth's large shadow covers the whole moon. Both kinds happen about once a year. F is for fusion. The energy source inside of stars is nuclear fusion, where atoms join together to form new elements. For most of a star's life, it is fusing hydrogen into helium. Hydrogen is the fuel that keeps the star going. Fusion needs very high temperatures and pressures like those in the core of a star. G is for galaxies. Each galaxy is a collection of up to a trillion stars all held together by their collective gravity. Galaxy shapes vary and can look like an ellipse or like our own Milky Way galaxy, which is shaped like a spiral. Even though the shapes of the galaxies appear solid, they are made up of many billions of stars with lots of empty space between them. They look fuzzy because they are too far away to see the individual stars clearly. H is for habitable zones. The habitable zone is the region around a star where it is warm enough for water to remain liquid. A planet in a star's habitable zone can have the right surface temperature for liquid water, a necessity for life as we know it. Every star has a habitable zone, but not always a planet in it. I is for inflation. Inflation was the very rapid expansion of the universe shortly after the Big Bang. Right after the Big Bang, the expansion of space was extremely fast for a brief fraction of a second, spreading out all the matter and energy and making the universe vast. Gradual expansion continues today. J is for Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Jupiter and the next three largest planets, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are gas giants that have no solid surface under their atmosphere. Earth, Venus, Mars, and Mercury are terrestrial planets and all have solid surfaces. Interesting. K is for Kepler's laws. 
Kepler's laws describe how planets orbit stars. Kepler's three laws of planetary motion state that, one, orbits do not have to be perfectly round, but can be stretched out ovals. Two, planets move faster when they are closer to their stars. And three, planets in larger orbits take longer to go around. L is for light year. One light year is the distance that light travels in one year. Light moves very fast. In one year, light travels 10 trillion kilometers. The nearest star to our sun is Proxima Centauri, which is 4.2 light years away. Because it takes 4.2 years for its light to get to us, we see Proxima Centauri as it was 4.2 years ago. M is for moon. Earth has one moon orbiting around it. Some other planets have zero moons and others have many. Our moon is much smaller than the Earth, so its gravity is weaker. That's why you will only weigh one sixth as much if you stood on the moon. The moon was the first celestial body that humans ever walked on. But there is much more to explore. Perhaps you will one day help humans visit Mars or beyond. N is for neutron star. A neutron star is the collapsed iron core that is left behind after a large star dies. When a big star dies, it explodes off its outer layers as a supernova, leaving a very dense core behind. That core is only a few kilometers across, but it can weigh as much as three times our whole sun. If a neutron star gets too heavy, it collapses to form a black hole. O is for orbit. Orbit is the free fall motion of one object around another due to gravity. When one object falls around another with only gravity acting on it, it is in orbit. Being in orbit requires enough sideways speed to avoid the two objects crashing into each other. If there were no sideways motion, gravity will pull the object straight down and it will crash. P is for penumbrum. Penumbra. Penumbra is the outer part of an eclipse shadow where the light is only partially blocked. During a total lunar eclipse, the darkest central part of the shadow, called the umbra, covers the moon. The penumbra surrounds the umbra and the moon must pass through the penumbra to reach it. Q is for a quasar. A quasar is one of the brightest objects in the universe. A quasar is a black hole swallowing gas and stars in the middle of a galaxy. Though black holes themselves are dark, stuff that is falling into one heats up and glows brightly before it disappears. Some stuff can flow out in bright jets pointing above and below the black hole. R is for red giant. A red giant is a star that has grown enormous at the end of its life. When a small or medium star has almost run out of hydrogen fuel in its core and is about to burn out, it first swells up to form a red giant. Red stars are cooler than white or blue stars. Our sun will become a red giant about 5 billion years from now. S is for satellite. Anything orbiting something else much bigger is called a satellite. Moons are natural satellites of planets. Communication satellites and space telescopes are examples of human-made satellites of Earth that people launched into orbit on rockets. T is for tides. Tides are the bulging of the oceans caused by gravity. Gravity's pull decreases over distance. On the near side, the moon pulls the bulge slightly away from Earth. 
On the far side, the moon pulls Earth slightly away from the bulge. Earth turns with both bulges once each day, making the tides go up and down twice per day. U is for universe. The universe is all the matter, energy, and space there is. The universe started about 13.8 billion years ago with the Big Bang. It has been expanding ever since. What came before the Big Bang, nobody knows. The universe has no center and no edges. B is for visible light. Visible light is the only kind of light that human eyes can see. Light ranges in wavelength from radio waves, the longest, to gamma rays, the shortest. Visible light is midway between those two extremes and includes all the colors of the rainbow from red to violet. W is for white dwarf. A white dwarf is the tiny core of a small star left behind after it dies. When a small or medium star, like our sun, runs out of fuel, the red giant that comes next can't hold on to its puffy outer layers. They float away, leaving the tiny white dwarf core behind. X is for X-ray telescope. An X-ray telescope is a space telescope used to collect X-ray light. X-rays are a form of light just like radio waves, visible light, and ultraviolet. And ultraviolet. <laughs> Unlike visible light, X-rays do not come through Earth's atmosphere. So X-ray telescopes must be in space above the atmosphere. Y is for year. A year is the time it takes the Earth to go around the sun once. One orbit takes about 365.25 days, but we call it a year, but we call a year 365 days. This means that our definition of a year is off by one day every four revolutions around the sun. To make up that day, we have leap years, 366 days in our calendar every four revolutions around the sun. Z is for zenith. When you stand up straight, zenith is a direction directly overhead. Zenith is a direction in the sky, much like north, south, east, and west are directions along the ground. No matter where you are standing on earth, the point in the sky directly overhead is called the zenith. The end. ABCs of space.